Okay, let's jump in. Hi, I'm Sophie. Welcome to my channel. This is the 1K Q&A. Biblio Sophie. I haven't filmed that many uh, videos recently. I've been too busy and I feel very, very sorely out of practice. I started this video a couple of times already and just kind of stared at myself without doing anything. Um, so that's the kind of energy I'm bringing. I feel like maybe that's always the kind of chaotic energy I'm bringing to these to some extent. First of all, thank you so much for subscribing, subscribing to my channel. I am really, truly pleased and um, just chuffed to have people who like to listen to me talk about books on a semi-regular basis. I have really, really enjoyed interacting with people from YouTube more this year as a result of starting a channel online and in real life in the case of a few people. Uh, this is a really delightful community full of just big-hearted people who are nerds and wonderful and I'm very, very thankful to have you in my life and I'm very, very thankful that you have invited me to be part of yours. So that's the mushy business. Uh, some questions about me and books and non-books. I have um, put all of the questions that are not so overtly bookish together and then the more bookish uh, questions afterwards. So without further ado, number one. Uh, the hourly breakdown per week of reading, dancing, singing, not sure where and when baking and cooking fit in. <laughs> First of all, um, baking and cooking are not really fitting in currently. Mostly I just eat bread, I feel like. Um, I'm not cooking very much for myself. I have tended to be a very good cook and I really like to cook, but I just am not really cooking for myself and others so much uh, these days because I don't have too much time or the energy to do it. So I hope at some point to get back into cooking meals. I don't do it enough. Um, in terms of the other stuff, I kind of calculated that I probably spend about 10 to 15 hours reading per week. Um, and that includes pleasure reading and school reading. And of course that changes from week to week. Uh, and within those 10 to 15 hours, how much is just leisure reading versus how much is research, etc. Obviously changes, but I think overall it tends to be that breakdown. Singing, I think it's about, 10 to 20 hours of solo practice on my own terms and about 10 to 20 hours of rehearsing and again you know it'll be more like 10 hours practice if it's more like 20 hours rehearsing and vice versa uh in a very kind of active opera season time it might be more like 30 hours per week of rehearsing so it kind of changes a lot dancing I don't have much of a dance practice uh, since I'm preparing some dance performances. I've been rehearsing more and, and as a result also practicing some, um, but I don't think I can really give a breakdown of that. I teach usually about five to 10 hours a week um, and I write about, I think, five hours in a typical week and obviously that's a lot more if I'm uh, working on like a term paper, which you know, for instance, I need to be doing. Um, number two, where did you get your gorgeous teapot? Does it have a story? This is the gorgeous teapot. I agree, it is gorgeous. I really, really love it. And the story is that uh, my ex commissioned it for my birthday one year. And I think it's a truly lovely present and object. And I have tea in it almost every morning and it's wonderful. So that's my teapot story. Number three, what is your ideal day from start to finish? What are you doing, wearing, eating, and seeing? Also to the above question, added to the above question, what's the weather outside uh, time of year, I assume for this ideal day? Uh, it's going to be either kind of autumn, the kind of first crisp days of autumn or the first mild days of spring you know i think a lot of people's favorite time of year um if it's a leisurely day i'm getting up kind of 
languidly waking up probably around eight, but not rolling out of bed for another hour or maybe two while I have um, some tea in bed, maybe also uh, some bread, butter, apricot jam, reading in bed, doing a crossword. Uh, then maybe do a little bit of practice for like an hour by myself, uh, head off to a museum either by myself early afternoon lunch around like one or two um, then some more either leisure time some more practicing time uh, have a martini in the evening potential um, have a nice dinner the less like super super leisurely ideally I can kind of ease into my day and I don't really have to do too much before like 11. I like to have a pot of tea in the morning and practice with my pot of tea. Um, then maybe I have a rehearsal at 11 or a meeting or a class that I like um, and kind of manage to stack things in a efficient way so that I'm going from uh, one rehearsal to maybe I could still sneak in like a gallery or meeting w up with someone for a walk in between a class or a rehearsal or something, um, go to a show in the evenings, go to a concert that I really like. I'm wearing probably some nice uh, trousers, um, just basically man trousers, uh, comfortable socks and some loafers. I love a loafer. I don't wear them as much. I used to have like a huge loafer phase and I never wear them anymore. Um, I'm wearing a silk undershirt and maybe like a nice freshly crisped um, collared shirt and a, uh, either a sweater or a jacket on top of it. I'm wearing a nice uh, perfume. I'm wearing maybe Shalimar, kind of old timey, or uh, something kind of warm in smell. Yeah, that's great. Um, ah, what's your sun sign? Give us the big three. Um, I had to look this up because I don't know this off the top of my head. I only know my sun sign, um, which is Gemini. My moon is Virgo and my ascendant is Libra. So do with that what you will. Uh, psychoanalyze me in the comments. Would a normal Gemini, an abnormal Gemini? I had a discussion about this with Pato um, some. Uh, so weigh in. What sun sign do you think I should be? I love knowing this kind of shit. <laughs> Uh, what media would have been formative to you growing up had you found it sooner? I, I struggled answering this question. By the way, these questions um, are delightful and they start to get harder and harder when it starts to be about favorites, of course. So I really, I've had to think a lot as a result of you. Um, and it's, I'm not sure. I was given the opportunity to explore so, so many things and I kind of latched onto the things that I latched onto, my answer is going to be writing my own music. And it's not like I wasn't exposed to the concept of writing my own music. Obviously I was studying music already. Um, I think if I had been exposed to the means of producing my own synthesized music and electronic music, I could conceivably have gotten into that more. Um, and that would have been interesting. I think that would have been a, a good channel for me um, if I'd built synthesizers as a kid and then started composing for synthesizer. So that, that could have been the uh, alternative history. Uh, somebody else also asked, are you interested in writing music or composing for opera? Effectively, no. Um, yeah, I'm a creative person. I like to write words. I don't like to write music. I think I certainly would not necessarily write opera. Um, and yeah, at this point, I don't want to say never, but I, I've never had too much of a, a 
of an urge to compose my own music up till now. I don't know if I ever will from now on. Uh, what's your least favorite part of making videos? I think the popular answer to have is editing, but I don't do that much editing. Quite honestly, I really just sit in front of the camera and talk and then intersperse some footage sometimes with vlogs. So that's not that much of a pain for me. Um, I think it's really actually the fear of starting, just the blank stare of, okay, I have to say something or wondering if I've gone on too long about something um, and starting to get too much in my head while talking. And it's also why I like making videos. It's an exercise in forcing myself to talk, trying to make coherent sentences out of my thoughts. Um, so it, the, the point of the exercise is also what I hate most about the exercise, which is to just force myself to say something <laughs> and to do so eloquently and coherently, ideally. Uh, favorite hair color, style, etc. you've had? I don't have an answer to this, really. I like having blonde hair now. It feels very fun. Uh, I think I really liked having a shaved head, so maybe that's my favorite recently, but not really. I, like, I could go back to that very easily. Um, and I'm kind of into the, the platinum currently. I like having bangs. I don't know. I, hair is not super, super important to me. Um, and I don't really pick favorites so much, so I don't really know. Could you name a couple of your favorite composers and or visual artists, or alternatively, if we want to stick with books, no need to, um, what are a couple of your favorite books on art or art criticism? All right, uh, this is, now we're starting to get into the favorites of things and it's really hard for me to pick favorites. I, I think it's hard for everybody, but I'm very obstinate about not picking favorites. But with that very long caveat of this is not exhaustive, I don't know, I'm just vaguely aleatorically picking some things that I really like. Some composers that I really like to listen to and that I really like to perform are Maurice Ravel, Arnold Schoenberg, Francis Poulenc, and Alban Berg. A lot of modernists. I love late 19th century and early 20th century. Francis Poulenc is a bit later, but I think they set text really, really well. Uh, I love the modernist texts that they set, symbolists. Um, so, and I love singing their stuff, but I also love their instrumental stuff. So those are four favorites of mine. Um, some visual artists that I really love, and again, truly non-exhaustive list. Um, Malievich, uh, Julie Meretu, El Greco, um, Tiepolo, and all of the artists of the Brücke, uh, expressionist, uh, movement. So that's, that's a very vast array of people. And, uh, some authors whose, um, works on art or art criticism. I like um, Roland Barthes, Susan Sontag. Uh, both are more talking about uh, photography, famously. Uh, Laura Mulvey on film. Uh, John Berger on visual art in general. So, and again, for the umpteenth time, non-exhaustive list, but I like a lot of those people. Uh, what are some of your favorite movies? I'll just name one because I couldn't think of a full list, but I'm currently absolutely obsessed with uh, The Color of Pomegranates by uh, Sergei Parajanov. It's just so gorgeous. Um, I really recommend it. It's on YouTube. The full movie is on YouTube and it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a movie that I can watch and rewatch. Um, what's a book that shaped how you see the world? I love that question. Hate it because it's difficult, but it's wonderful. Um, I've chosen to answer uh, Catullus poetry and Ovid's Metamorphoses, both in Latin. A huge Latin nerd um, in high school. 
well, middle and upper school. And uh, when I discovered really, really translating Latin poetry, I think that changed my approach to reading and thinking and kind of formulating how I wanted also to use words. Um, I think it really put in my mind the concept of words as being a bunch of tiny doors to worlds that needed to be analyzed and mined and um, opened and kind of s scrutinized and also how I wanted to read and how I wanted to write. So being really introduced to translation and meticulous translation was it. Um, what book or book series first sparked your love of reading is sort of similar. I don't know in terms of childhood. I, I don't know if I was a big reader in childhood. I loved books as objects. Um, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure. So what I'm going to answer is White Teeth by Zadie Smith, which I read in high school. And it's one of the first kind of contemporary literary fiction that I read. I'd mostly read to that point, or al almost exclusively read classics. I'd read a lot of British literature, a lot of Russian literature, and um, not actually as much French literature. Um, and uh, realizing that I could read contemporary fiction and really like it, that sort of got me on a train um, to start looking for new books recently published. I didn't do it always, um, but I started getting really interested. I started uh, getting The New Yorker and um, reading through the briefly noted section and kind of listing books that I found interesting and that I wanted to buy for myself. And I've had, I've had boom and bust periods in the years since, um, but I think we'll call that the kind of initiating literary fiction, contemporary fiction uh, moment for me. Uh, favorite books from childhood and how did these influence and shape you? So as I said, I don't remember too much being in the corner reading my picture book or then my like middle grade books or something, um, but I got a lot of art books as presents or would go through my mother's art books and I think that definitely helped to shape my aesthetic sense and my my love of books as objects. And then also uh, my mother and I read through most of the Moliere plays together, uh, which was really wonderful. And I think that definitely influenced me to be, to want to perform, to want to have a, a very kind of tactile and embodied relationship to language and words. Um, I highly recommend reading through plays with um, your friends, lovers, children. It's, it was just a wonderful thing to do. We would do a few scenes or even just a scene uh, before bed together, divvy out all the parts at the beginning of the scene. Okay, well, you're gonna be this person, you're gonna be that person and just read through it. And um, it was just a really wonderful thing to do. And uh, when we had read through most of Moliere, we started reading Shakespeare. Um, first in French, because uh, I was still learning English. Uh, and so Macbeth and Hamlet are two of the first uh, English language books that I remember reading. And we had a copy that was in English on one side, or yeah, yeah, the original language English on one side and French on the other side. Um, and that was also really wonderful because I was in the process of starting to be more comfortable with English as well. Um, I don't read a lot of genres of especially fiction um, and I just recently recommended superfluously but still um, and the employees so it's been on my mind and I'll mention it I think it's a great book um, I don't read that much sci-fi it is uh, soft sci-fi um, and something I never super got into but I really like that one What's your favorite book? I don't have an answer. I just don't know. Um, I've mentioned a bunch of various books. I don't know. And I could, I could 
name I'm sure some I could sort of force myself to do something but it's it's that's too broad so I'm leaving that one blank um, but relatedly this could be an answer to do you have a favorite book do you have a heart book or books uh, books that you revisit again and again and or that have had a huge impact on you as I've said many times I I really feel like this is much too small a list but some things that have definitely had an influence on me and that I've really enjoyed reading and or rereading are Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde, How to Do Both by Ali Smith, uh, L'Archéologie du Savoir by Michel Foucault, Alcool by Apollinaire, and Poésie by Stéphane Mallarmé. So two poetry collections, some um, really formative philosophy um, and social theory, critical theory, and um, some fiction that's kind of somewhere between uh, art theory and uh, fiction, which I really love. And finally, what book reflects your state of being currently? I'm gonna say Bluets by Maggie Nelson, which is a little damning of me, but I'm in a, I'm in a very kind of ecstatic melancholy portion of my life currently. It's not always ecstatic in the positive sense, but I think there is kind of an ecstasy to it. Um, I'm in a contemplative mood and I'm in a blue mood a lot, but I'm also in a very investigative mood. So we'll say that. All right, that's enough. So, <laughs> Those are my questions. Those are my questions. Sorry about that. Um, again, a hearty thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.